Hi there, and thanks so much for joining me for another video. I'm Erin Eno, and today we will be drawing and painting this line and wash hollyhock. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. And to see more videos like this, please be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So now let's just jump in and get drawing and painting. Today I'm using my Baohong Academy cold press watercolor paper. It's 140 pound, 100% cotton. I have my Royal, Va Royal Talons Van Gogh paints and I have three brushes I'm going to be using today. I have a Curry's 2500 series in a size 10 round. I have a Curry's 2400 series in a size 6 round and I have a Princeton Snap in a size 2. Um, you will also need a marker. I am using a Sharpie pen which is bleed proof and works quite well. Um, I'm going to tackle this without pre-drawing it, but if you want to pre-draw it in pencil first, that's perfectly okay. I'm just, and I would normally do that, I'm just, I don't know, feeling a little impatient today. And also I've lost a little foamy thing off my microphone, so hopefully the sound is okay. Okay, so I don't have a reference for my hollyhock. I just basically looked up a ton of images on the internet just to get an idea of how they grow and what they look like and we're just going to go from what's in my head. So they kind of grow like a trumpet, like they kind of go up and kind of curve out like a trumpet. I'm going to try to capture that. Um, wish me luck. So I'm going to try to do a head on view, maybe head on a little off to the side. Who knows? We'll see how it comes out. So we're just going to start with uh, one petal and they have five petals. Okay, so we're just going to start, actually, you know what, I'm going to draw the stamen first, just so I can get that in place and just kind of a semi kind of side view. So then I'll start with one petal and they're going to be kind of crinkly. So I want it to come up and curve out like a trumpet. Okay, so you get that kind of curve. And then they've got kind of crepey petals. So I'm just going to do kind of wonky, jagged kind of petals. Okay, now I'm not going to draw that petal all the way down because I want to do the next petal that's going to overlap that one. Okay, so you want to have that same kind of trumpet shape where it comes up and kind of curves over like that. Okay, and then we'll do a jagged shape like so. Then we're going to do the next petal that's going to overlap that one. I'm going to actually, okay, so curve and then go over like a trumpet. That one's kind of not a very dark line, but, and I'm keeping it kind of loose. I'm not, um, you know, these aren't botanical illustrations. Okay, and we'll come around and do the next petal that comes off of that one. Like so. And do his kind of crinkly edges. And then we have one last petal. like so. Okay, so it's kind of rough. Like I say, I'm not penciling this in first, so it's just going to be what it's going to be. And they grow from a stalk, so I don't want to draw the stalk quite yet till I get some of the flowers established. I want to do another one, kind of a back view that's kind of poking out from this one. So actually, maybe I will draw the stalk. Let's just start drawing in the stalk, just parts of it. They all grow on this one main stalk. Okay, so then from this stalk, I'm going to have this curve out and have another petal, but we'll do the back view. So from that, we'll do the little stamens. 
that you would see on the back of the petal. You'd only see part of that one. Just like that. So now we know where the back center of that petal is and I'm just going to start drawing in the petals that come from that. I'm trying to figure out how the trumpet shape would look. It would be kind of curving this way and then up on these ones because it's a back view. Okay, this one's kind of hidden so we don't have to be too fussy about it. This one again, curving out, little crinkly edge, one, two, three petals. One, two, three, four. And the other one will be hidden back there. So we don't need to worry about that. Down here, we're gonna do one that's just partially open. And I'm going to make it come off kind of the front. So I'm gonna bring it into that stem a little bit, into the main stem like that. If I was to put it just on the side and it would just look like it's coming right out from the side, I wanted to make it look like it's coming out from the front a little bit. So I just draw these lines in from that main stem. I hope that makes sense if you can see that. Okay, so then we're gonna do stamens. Have this turned a little bit. Just like that. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this just so I have a better idea and we're just going to draw some partially bloomed petals. They'll be all nice and crinkly. Just like so and we'll have one come kind of at the back. That'll be crinkly, like so. So that's a partially bloom one. Then we're gonna put a leaf in. I'm not big on the leaves, so I'm not gonna do like full size leaves. I'm just not big on them. So we'll make it look like one leaf is coming out from the back and we will draw it, I guess, about here. They're kind of like a real challenged maple leaf. They're kind of wonky and not the prettiest petals or flower or leaves rather, which is why I don't want to do huge ones. Shouldn't be dissing the hollyhock leaf, but it's really just not that pretty. Neither is the leaf for the uh, anemone. Even though the flowers are very pretty. Okay, so I'm not fussing too much on the leaves. Just want to include a couple there. And then we'll have one coming right out from the side. And maybe this will just be like a side view or partially turned view. Again, I don't want to focus too much on the petals or on the leaves. How many times am I going to call them petals? And I'm just going to ink in the main outline for this first and then I'm going to go in later and do more line work. Okay, so that is that. Then we're going to continue the stock up and it finishes with just a few buds at the top. Okay, I'm going to do a partially opened bud coming off of this one. Just, just barely kind of peeking through. Okay, so it's just about to bloom. Okay, the, the petals haven't even opened yet. Just like that. Should be a little fatter, but that's okay. Then I'm gonna continue up 
and we're just going to do a few more buds maybe this one's like on the front so I just won't even finish that line well I kind of screwed that up oh well that's what happens when you just get impatient and you want to go right to the marker so I have another one coming off of here and they're like kind of fat squat uh, teardrop shape and then at the very top I'll have it curve off a little bit why not we'll just maybe do one here that's not very round and we'll do one coming off of there and one more just poking through the very top just like that so we're going to start with the green and i've got a mix of um, sap green and olive green here it's my basic um, go-to green right now so i'm just going to start with a kind of a medium wash i don't want to go too dark here And then while this is still wet, this is where we're just going to go in and put a few little bleeds in just to get some depth. But I'm going to switch to my smaller brush. So I'm going to go to the size two, get some of that green on there. Maybe I'll darken it up a bit. Have it not so... not so uh, watered down. And we're just going to put some lines in here. Put some tone in here. And it can just be kind of rough because, like I say, we're going to be doing it uh, more with the ink, but you do want some tone before you put your uh, before you put your ink on so this is dried a little bit so I'm just actually moving some tone around with a wet brush wet to damp because these didn't quite bleed as much as I thought they would and I do want them to bleed a little bit okay just like that a few lines on this guy Maybe a little extra tone down here. This one went a little flat, so I'm going to pick up some pigment. Okay, so you like I say, you don't need to fuss with this too much. Maybe I'll put a little more, well, a little more darkness down here, up here. That will bleed at this point because it's it because it is damp. And I want to do just a shaded kind of edge going all the way up this stem just to give it some shape. Okay, so I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush so it's just a little damp and I'm just going to soften that edge. So just add little hit, hints of tone. Okay, so now I'm just tapping it in. soften this up even more okay don't want to play too much I think that's good enough then I'm gonna go and do the rest of the stock 
and those buds and then we'll get on to the flowers okay so again just starting with a medium wash I'm just going to fill everything in now for this bloom it really you know what I don't like it it's too stubby or too skinny so I'm going to do another line there and another steeple. So we're kind of cheating, but that's okay. It's a fix, right? Like so. So then I'm gonna tie, oh, go to my number two brush. Whoops. Get some of that darker pigment, maybe even mix more of it. Okay, and I'm just gonna tap. Again, up that side. Now this one's still, it's a little more wet than the other one was, so I don't need to soften that edge so much. And I'm just gonna start by adding First, some shading to get some shape in these guys. This one might be quite dark because it's behind the other ones. Then I will rinse off my brush and just going in with a damp brush, just kind of soften these edges a bit. Maybe this one might be a little heavy. Okay, and while that's drying, I'm going to mix up some color for the pink and I'm going to use rose. I really don't need that much. And I want to tone it down just a little bit by putting in just a little bit of neutral tint in there, just so it's not such a vibrant pink. It's almost like a bubblegum pink. And I don't need a lot because we're just gonna be, we're just gonna be doing a light wash primarily. So I'm gonna take a very light wash of it and I'm gonna paint this little bloom that's starting to come out. Maybe not that light. And before this completely dries, I'm going to, I want to tap a little bit of green in towards the base where it's coming out of that um, sepal. Okay, just like that. So we'll let that sit a bit. Okay, so before the green completely dries up there, I'm going to go in with more of the green and I'm just going to paint in these little lines We can enhance these with the line work that we do as well, okay? So like I say, I wanted to tap a little bit of green just in the bottom of this bud. Like that. And now we're going to go on to the flowers. So first I'm going to take some yellow. I've got some um, azo yellow medium there and I want to make it just slightly green. I'm just going to take a little bit of that green just so it's not like a yellow yellow. But I just want a really light wash of it and I'm going to put it around the center. It can be the sepal and then whoop should be using a bigger brush. I'll go to my six, just with a really light wash. 
just go around the center and I'm just dragging it up a bit into the rest of the flower just kind of really rough soften that edge even more and then you can also take a little bit of that green and just tap some around there don't tap into the sepal okay if it bleeds into the sepal i'm not hugely concerned about it but Hopefully it won't bleed into the sepal too much. So just like that, maybe a little more yellow. Okay. And then I will also take that yellow and just put some around the base of the back of this flower, just so we get the same kind of tones in there. I don't think the yellow would be so prominent on the back, but it's there. We can cover as much of it up as we want. Okay, so now we're gonna go to this little enclosed, or just partially bloomed flower with my number six. And just with a light wash, we're gonna cover the whole thing So then I'm going to switch to my number six, or my number two rather, and just with the tip of my brush, I'm just going to try to enhance some of these crinkly wrinkles that we, we would see. And maybe some shadow where the petals overlap, just like that, but a little bit more pigment towards the bottom. Definitely more pigment in these petals at the back. I'm wondering if I should have used my liner brush here, but I'm just going to go in with a damp, clean damp brush and just soften some of these up. We're, I just want to um, hint at them here because we're really going to pick them up when we do the line work, okay? Okay, so I'm just adding in more tone to the petals at the back because they can afford to be that much deeper. Okay, so that's that. Now I'm going to take, I'm slopping. Yeah, I just dropped water on that. Oops. So now I'm gonna go in with my number 10 brush. I'm gonna mix up a little bit more of this pink though. Okay, and again, a light wash. And we're gonna go over the whole flower. And I'm not worried about going outside the lines a little bit. You can do this actually as rough or as careful as you like. Okay, and because this flower is kind of curving over at the top, like a trumpet, I'm going to try to have a little bit of a, a highlight on that curve. So I'm going to rinse off my brush, tap it off on my paper towel, and just kind of soften this edge a bit so we get a little bit of a lighter edge to it. I may have waited too long. No, that's okay. That works. Then I'm going to go back into this pink. And we're going to paint it over where we had the yellow. That's a lot of paint there. Don't need that much. And 
and I'm going to rinse my brush off and I'm actually just going to soften these edges. So as you do that, keep tapping your brush off on your paper towel because when you're doing this, you're picking up pigment. Okay, and you don't want to just keep tapping that pigment back in to your flower. Now I think we can still afford to be a little deeper towards the middle. So I'm going to go back into that pink. Kind of like a medium wash, I guess. So here I'm just adding in a bit of shading where those petals will overlap. Okay, and I want to add a, just a little bit more pink towards the middle. And I'm working quickly because I don't, I'm trying not to fuss with this, but I don't want everything to go too dry on me. Okay, so again, I'm rinsing off my brush, tapping it on my paper towel, and just kind of softening these edges up. Now I'm going to go back to my size 10 brush and put our light wash of pink on that back facing flower. So I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and just kind of soften those edges up. Okay, being careful not to lose a lot of that yellow. I think we can afford to lose some of it on the back. I'm going to take more of that pigment, tap it in here because it would be darker under here where it is kind of shaded from that other bloom. And then we can add more pigment here where the petals overlap. And because the curve is underneath, you can add more pigment there to kind of indicate that it's curving back. Okay, so again, I'm going to rinse and dry off my brush and just kind of soften this out. You can also take your small brush again, size two, go in with more of that pigment and just add some more tone. I think I will do that to this guy as well. I just think it can afford to be a little more pink. In fact, I'm going to go to my number six brush and just add another layer of wash. I think the, the white was kind of maybe too much. But again, I also could be fussing too much because we're going to add to this with the line work. So I think I'll leave it at that. And then I'm going to dry it completely with my heat tool. I'm going to actually soften this out a bit and maybe put a little bit more tone in this leaf. Just a little bit. Okay, so now I'm going to dry it with my heat tool and then we'll get inking. So I think this is dry enough now that we can go in with our marker, but I will start with the greenery because I know that's what we did first and I know that's good and dry. So I'm just gonna add some veins in this guy. Kinda did that curve the wrong way. Maybe some texture lines along that main vein. OK, 
okay. Same with this guy. He's kind of a side view, so I'm not quite sure what to do with him, but. Then I'm just gonna add a little bit of shading to this stamen here. Okay, same with this guy. We're just kind of enhancing it a bit. I don't want too many lines, but just enough to enhance it. This flower I know was dry too, so we're gonna go in and add a few lines just to kind of indicate that it's got some crinkles in it. Same with back here. And do some coming down from the top, some just coming up from the bottom. Okay, just enough. You could even thicken up the one that indicates where that other petal is if you want. Just like that. We'll come up and we'll kind of add a little bit of shading to this little bud. Maybe another line where some petals are going to sprout out of. And here I'm going to draw lines that will be like the separate uh, layers of the stamen. Just like that. Almost like striped. And a little bit of shading under him. You can deepen up the one at the very back up there as well. And then all we have left to do are the flowers. So I want to do this kind of sparingly and, and then we can always go back in. So I'm going to start with this guy and I'm just going to do a couple at the bottom that will indicate that curve. Okay, I don't want to go crazy. Then I'm going to do a couple up here that will indicate that curve. Okay, so it's coming up and around like that. Just enough. I don't want to, you know, look back at it and go, oh, oh, there's way too many ink lines. So I'm just starting off kind of sparingly, but I'm following that curve, that kind of trumpet curve that we want indicated, okay? And you can do some wrinkles because, like I say, the flowers are kind of crepey like You could also go in and thicken up that line between the petals like we did on the other one. So again, following the curve. So that's that. And here, I'm just going to put some dots on the stamen. Then I'm going to, I'm actually going to heavy up these petals right now. You could do this with two different sized markers, which would be ideal. I just don't have them handy right now. Okay, so the same thing. I'm going to follow this curve up and then some curves showing that it's kind of curving over or some lines showing that it's curving over. And I'm leaving it where that highlight would be. I hope that makes sense. So the curve is going up. It's straighter when you're in the center and then it's curving up and then down. So you're just kind of indicating these crinkle lines. Do it sparingly where that highlight is, okay? Just like that. Same thing here. Accentuate this curve. See, I'm going where some of these dips are. When you get closer to the center, it's going to be straighter. 
and then it's going to start to curve this way. It can be a little darker towards the center if you want. I just want to go sparingly at first. I'm going to enhance that stamen. And I think that's it. So there you go. There is your finished ink and wash hollyhock. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and that you found it helpful. I found it helpful uh, because I don't do a lot of line and wash. So I quite enjoy doing this. So if you do give this a try and you're on Instagram, as I always say, please be sure to share your work and tag me so I can have a look. That's it for today, guys. Thanks again so much for joining me and I'll see you next time.